Hey, this is Wes Borland. And this is Marshall Gilpatrick. We're from Blacklight Burns, and you're watching The Musician Network. Our, uh, our debut album, Cruel Melody, took us forever to record, basically because we were uh, Danny Loner and I, who were the only people participating the whole time. In the recording of it, we're working like over a two and a half year period of time, and uh, I was basically tracking all the instruments except for drums, and Danny played like a little bit of guitar and a little bit of bass. Uh, but for the most part, demos that I had been working on for a really long time, I brought to Danny, and, and uh, we kind of assembled, assembled the team of people that had been working on um, with us d on doing remixes and doing soundtracks. Uh, and the group of people that worked with us, the core was uh, this uh, engineer named Critter who had worked on the old ministry, uh, some of the old ministry records. Uh, Josh Eustace was another engineer that was based more, uh, kind of lean more towards electronica and uh, doing sound design and, and working with um, synthesizers. Uh, and he's from a band, uh, Josh Eustace is from a band called Telephone Tel Aviv out of New Orleans. Uh, Josh Freeze is like the drummer for every band in the world, basically. And uh, he played the all the live drums on the album except for I Am Where It Takes Me. And I like played the drums and cut them together for that one. But uh, And then uh, Danny Lohner, who was in Nine Inch Nails for 10 years, produced the album. Um, some of the guest people on the record uh, were Sam Rivers, who I played in Limp Bizkit with, was on played based on I Have a Need. Uh, Jeanette Napolitano from Concrete Blonde sang on I Am Where It Takes Me. Karina Round, who's an amazing solo artist from the UK, uh, sang on Cruel Melody. Sonny Moore uh, from First to Last uh, sang on Coward. The original intention was to have three uh, female vocalists on the record, but um, I had been talking for a long time to, to Lisa Gerard from Dead Can Dance actually and and uh, had met with her and she was really into singing on the record and just time conflicts made that not be able to happen and uh, I'm kind of glad that it didn't because as the more I thought about it I was gonna have to create a song that was like specifically for her to sing on and uh, the more I thought about like where her voice would fit the the more I thought about like how it would maybe overshadow everything that was going on with the song um, and uh, so she got replaced by Sonny Moore, and I had uh, played bass with from first to last during most of 2006. Uh, so I had a guy and two women on the record, which was great, and, and I'm super glad that it worked out that way. We also had the section quartet on the record, who's the same string quartet that plays on the Perfect Circle records, and that was basically, you know, a hookup through Danny, and they do, like, independent films and they're all union and it was just like really bizarre to go in and have them sort of orchestrate like take the string parts that I had recorded terribly on cello and synthesizer and have them actually do it so it was a long arduous process to say the least that took a really long time and there was a lot going on and um and Marshall you have a lot you can look forward to the next record probably not being that long so yeah. It's nice because I finally get to step into a situation where I'm not striving to find other people that think like-minded or, you know, share the same talents or tastes. It's a uh, pretty even level across the board and, um, you know, a, a lot can go unsaid when it comes to what we both know that we like. And, you know, obviously with the material right now that we're playing, you know, I was able to kind of take what Freeze laid down on the record and I just kind of ran with it and made it my own. And, you know, like when, when there's little ideas here and there to, like, make it sound better live, you know, we work really well, you know, pinpointing those areas and you know, just making it sound as good as we possibly can live. But um, it's really awesome. I mean, w when we do finally get to commence on, on the next record, um, I feel very comfortable without having to 
overexert myself or try really hard and, you know, proving my, you know, playing my, my drums and, and any ideas I have in any other areas. It's like I think it's pretty understood between the two of us. And uh, I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to it. It's one thing to just have a good sounding record and you can, you know, go out and, and hope to see that reproduced, you know, track by track, the exact same sounds live, but it's another thing that to throw that in people's face and to want it to be, you know, very confrontational and, you know, very engaging where you want them to take away an experience, not just watching a band play, you know, you want them to be invigorated. And I think having the live energy that we're able to do, you know, conveys that really well live. I think so. Well, yeah, like one of the main things, I don't feel like it's as much, as much of having something to prove on stage as it is just trying to completely take the what the record is about. And um, the record is a beat myself up record, so I beat the fuck out of myself on stage and hit myself really hard whenever I'm feeling like that. Like re I try to really relive the songs every night and re like relive what was going on um, during the making of the record and uh, relive what was going on when I wrote the songs. Hang on. <laughs> Fucking at the end of my rope with these people at this tour. It's just like... Three days left. Three days left. Four days left, actually, but it's like, I don't know. It's <laughs> the end of it. It's just like... Anyway, it's so the live show, I just try to, we just try to, I mean, I can only speak for myself that I try to play like it's the last time I'm ever going to play, like I'm going to get hit by a bus the next day yeah. or something like that. And um, I've always had a, been in a very sort of warfare-like mood when I go on stage um, and, and just feel like if I'm not doing what the music is well, I'm not if I'm not acting out what the intention of the music is then I'm failing miserably and um, I just I hate going to live shows where people don't get it on like 100% and it's I, I get disgusted by it and I don't feel like those people have the right to be out there making music that doesn't mean that every band should be going bananas on stage if it doesn't call for it because there's I've seen some bands like that are a, a really mellow band that have like a overactive guitar player or something yeah. that's like being too into it and it looks completely out of place and terrible yeah. but but i think that it's just whatever the music calls for you just have to be very attuned to that and and try to I, I definitely never fake it i always just do whatever i feel like doing whether it's like getting like creating a force field like if i feel like all of a sudden i need to like give energy to like a speaker cabinet or something by like shooting at it or i think last night i was like attempting to throw a bottle into a hole in the ceiling for no reason at all just like that's what i thought needed to happen right then so anyway